Joining me today is Damon Gamow, an award-winning Australian screen director, author and activist. After his debut documentary, That Sugar Film, broke Australian box office records, Damon has forged a path to inspire positive change for creating compelling documentaries that not only educate, but encourage real-world action. In 2019, Damon released the 2040 film, a documentary painting a hopeful image of the world he would like his daughter to inherit, which was wildly acclaimed and is one of the top five highest grossing documentaries in Australian history. Cementing his place in the story of how our nation will tackle the climate crisis of this decade of action, Damon, with the help of support from the WF team, have released a new film that weaves together the hopes and the dreams of Australians from all walks of life. Regenerating Australia is inspired by the events of the past two years, taps into current public sentiment of the yearning and disruption that will lead us to achieve great things for our planet by 2030 if we all work together. Welcome, Damon, and thanks so much for joining me today. I wanted to start with a question because for the 2040 film, you said that as a, a father to your young daughter, you were inspired to create that film. And as a, as a father, I can really identify with that. Can you little tell me about the new film, Regenerate Australia? What's it about and what's the inspiration that helped uh, for you to create it was mainly the response to 2040, I guess, in, in a lot of ways, that was an experiment in using a sort of a hope fueled narrative as a way to motivate people and get them excited to engage. Because as we know, if we're only hearing that negative story, it can really lead to paralysis in a lot of people because of the way it, it reacts in our brain. I just feel like more and more that we, we need to be telling those stories, those positive, hopeful, um, legitimately hopeful, muscular hope. Um, visions of the future to get people excited and, and, and wake them up from this sort of apathy that they're in around environmental issues. So Regenerating Australia really takes a lot of leanings and learnings from 2040 and, again, is a, is a vision of what Australia could look like in 2030 uh, if we implemented a lot of the changes that a lot of the people want to see. So it was based on interviews over four months with a variety of Australians from very different backgrounds and we asked them what their hopes and dreams were for the future and then took all that information and then constructed it into this vision. Can I just uh, get your thoughts on regenerating? Um, regeneration is a, is a new concept. It's different than sustainability per se and because I think it starts to bring together a number of elements that um, really need to, to to be in place to do that type of transformation that you're talking about. Can I, can I just get your sense on where you think the regeneration is, is going? I think that if you look at, um, you know, our planetary boundaries or even Australia's boundaries, ecological boundaries, that they've all been so badly breached and damaged that the idea of sustainability just doesn't hold up in them anymore. To achieve sustainability, we have to adopt a regenerative process. We might have been able to be sustainable in the 80s and 90s because we hadn't that, done that damage. But now we've just put so many chemicals into the system, destroyed so many landscapes, destroyed so many animals, uh, using so many plastics that it's just, it, it, now, it now warrants regenerative action. You know, we are living in a degenerative economy. It's extractive, it's dominant, it's, it's div divisive, whereas regenerative economies are inclusive and they share resources and they're less competition they're more cooperative and i think people are crying out for that you know we need to regenerate a lot of our ecosystems in this country but we also need to regenerate our relationships with first nations people and our mental health and our social social housing issues so there's lots of regenerative approaches that are needed right now because it's just not enough to continue what we're doing to sustain the practices that we are doing right now just takes us flying over the cliff so so to reach sustainability we need to uh enact regenerative process i wanted to come back because at, at wbf you know the listening exercise which work with you on really influence our thinking because it was mm. a really stark message about needing to do things differently and putting communities and nature first so i'm keen to to get your thoughts on you know how excited are you about the ability now to engage with those 
communities across Australia and then be able to start to see them put in place um, some solutions um, at a community level to regenerate their communities and their ecosystems. And I think the, the unique circumstance we're in with this film is to have that fund, a $2 million fund, uh, suddenly makes it, lifts it to, to another level where we can take this into communities and say, look, if you've got a really beautiful idea, you know, Innovate to Regenerate can help you bring it to life and develop it. So, so many times, I'm sure you're the same, I've, I've spoken to people that do have these ideas, but then they come up against a feasibility study or some kind of policy that needs to change. So to know that there is a channel for them to apply to here to, to potentially bring that to life, I just think is going to be so exciting for a lot of those communities. And not just that, I think that, as you know, there are then you know, increasingly num larger numbers of impact investors that are waiting for, for the right solutions to emerge so that they can then scale them up. Um, so I think that's the... The added bonus of this too is if we can sort of pull out a variety of solutions in these communities and then introduce them to the right people, um, we could make some extraordinary change here. And, and that really is what needs to happen. I'm actually off to Stanford um, over the, um, the autumn to, um, to study impact investing and, and the role that um, philanthropy is going to play in this, in this sort of regenerative um, space can you give me a little little bit more thinking about the role that impact investors can play in really helping those communities um, take this to, to scale I would say that from my own research and 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 learning and and even from lots of people I interact with in this space that people always or often underestimate that financial piece and when you realize just how much capital is going towards a degenerative future, <laughs> You know, unless we start shifting that in really meaningful ways, um, you know, all this work that we're trying to do is just going to come to nothing. I'd say in the last four or five years that there's been a huge wake up around the world, especially in this country, of people that have accumulated huge amounts of wealth. And as you would know, there are trillions now going into climate tech and climate space. And, you know, I don't think anyone would have predicted that, you know, five or six years ago, just the amount of momentum that's shifted there. So, you know, there's still work to be done. We, we really need to sort of unravel, even in the impacting investment space, you know, the high level of returns that some people still require, but the return is the social one, is, is the future for your children, is a more uh, habitable, you know, society and functioning democracy. I think there's still some story or, or education to do around that piece, but certainly uh, it's incredibly encouraging to, to see what's happening. I think we hope that through the film we have uh, those leaders of industry and those um, industrialists that have made the money in the tech sector have come out and say, well, actually, that's the type of vision that I want for Australia too, because I think if that capital is behind these type of visions, um, then, it, you know, then we've got a chance to go to scale. I wanted to, first of all, just come back to the First Nations wisdom that is a really important part up front early in the film and I think is like a foundation piece in some ways to regenerating Australia. Could you just talk a little bit about mm. how you went about in the film of doing that and, and the response from First Nation leaders as you talk to them about that, that vision for 2030? Yeah, I mean, this has been um, a really challenging, um, rewarding, complex, um, difficult process for me to go on, even the learning I've gone in, in making this film and, and understanding really that regeneration, true regeneration in this country cannot happen without that sort of deep listening. We're in the unique opportunity here of, of, of our Indigenous or the Indigenous in this country, having lived through ice ages and, and rapid sea level rise and this incredible amount of knowledge and wisdom that we could really learn from in this moment, given that what we're doing to our landscape. So I just felt that that piece had to go in. What was tricky in the film was to say, if we did really recognise First Nations people and, and enact that voice to Parliament. None of us really know what transformative effect that could have on our culture because if we're going to do it properly and not just tokenise it, then it really does transform our culture and the way we view landscapes and interactions and all sorts of things. So it's impossible to really speculate, but I think what, I, what, what I'm proud of is what we've done is at least give people a feeling of what that would be like if it happened. Now's the time, especially around regeneration. It's such an inclusive movement and it has to encompass place and history and, and, and no one does that better than, uh, than the First Nations people of this country. 
at the beginning, we talked a little bit about um, how your daughter inspired you on 2040 and, and how my son inspires me about sort of thinking about the hope for the future. And you've talked about that youth voice. Can you leave us with um, some insights into how this film you know, um, picked up some of those youth voices and the, the, the importance of that youth voice um, in really... Um, landing 2030 because they're the ones that are going to deliver the 2040, 2050 vision. It's, it's not going to be you and me. I, I often have you know, deep concern for, for, for their views on the future and, and where we're headed, especially during COVID, post fires. You know, a lot of them are, are incredibly despondent and, and don't have much hope. And a lot of them are talking about not having children. So I feel like our generation and older has a, has a responsibility to... Um, make sure that they are reminded there are things we can do, extraordinary things that we can do and solutions we can enact. We need to be honest about where we're at and then inspire them and say, look, you know, the regeneration of our landscapes and our communities is going to create so many jobs. They're so passionate. They're so articulate, these kids. It's unbelievable. And we need to give them a voice. And I was at the the UN Climate Action Summit in New York in 2019 and I did a panel with this young Danish girl who just was extraordinary and she was part of the Danish youth the first Danish youth advisory council that had been implemented and and their government consults with that generation about what their issues are uh, lets them sit in on some of the policy discussions and I just thought this is the future you know this is exactly what we should be doing in our country here give these kids the legitimate voice and a seat at the table because as you said it's their future that's up for grabs here I think that that combination of um, giving them a voice and, and power in decision making, I think, is super important. And the toolbox to say, no matter what job you're working, whether you're working in finance or legal or seaweed farming or agriculture, each and every one of you can play a role in regenerating this country. I think that that's a very powerful message for the for the next couple yeah. of years. And then so. there's no choice, really, as you know. So we don't have a choice. We we think we have a choice, but. When you really understand what's going on and what we face right now, um, everyone will be involved in this movement in some way in the decades ahead. Damon, thank you so much for the conversation today. Um, we're super excited to work with you on this film and to make some of the ideas that come out of this at a community level and also the big picture conversation in this country about where we're going to realise over the next few years. So thank you so much. Thank you, Damon. Pleasure. Pleasure.